Hello. Welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now we're actually we're out in Mount Bay today. Which is just off Penzance. And uh, just on my way out now to try and I'm gonna go drifting for fish today. And I've just uh, come upon a little mark that I want to try out. It's like a big wait, it's a, it's a big feature on the bottom, it's a big wreck. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try and drift over it with a live bait. Now there is um, a lot of pilchards in the water today. A couple of boats out seining for them. Now um, don't usually fish down this area so it's gonna be a new experience for me. And this mark where I'm trying to drift over at the moment, I've, I've never fished it before, but it just looked fishing. So we'll, uh, we'll see what we can find. Hopefully, there'll be a bass or a pollock or something. It is incredibly snaggy though, so I'm, I'm in a real risk of, of just losing gears. We'll give, you, we'll give you a couple of tries. Currently in 130 feet of water, that's a good strike. We just drifted over the top of it. Now all I was fishing there was I was just using my live bait rig. Hello. There's the live bit. There's the pollock. A cracking first fish, isn't it? And there's the bait that I caught it on. Well, I call that success. <laughs> we'll uh, unhook him, get him back, go around for another drift. There we are. We'll just run through this rig with you really quickly. It's just my standard live baiting rig. It's just a little bullet lead inside of about 10 inches. Maybe three feet, 30 pound mono, and it's a 10 o Cox and Roll Chino. Now you can use circles for this, but I've been using chinos lately and I've been having a lot of success. Take a little live Joey and just hook him right through the upper jaw like that. And then all I did was I just lowered it down under control as we were drifting up to the wreck. So as we're drifting that way and the wreck's here, I'm lowered it down so I'm just hit the bottom just before the wreck. And just as I saw the wreck coming up on the sounder, reeled up a little tiny bit so I didn't come snagged. It, there's a lot of luck involved because you could drop down and immediately drop straight into the wreck or you could not drop down fast enough and you could miss the wreck. What you're wanting is fish will generally, they will hide up at the back side, at the down tide side of the wreck. As you can see there is an awful lot of ground swell still on. Boats rocking around all over the place. There's my live bit. Go back round for another go. We haven't got very much drift here, so the little bit of swell and a little bit of wind is helping us. Just started drifting along and all I've been fishing is a simple two down rig with a bit of fresh mackerel on. I've only been drifting maybe five minutes. I hadn't even had a chance to get the second rod set up. <laughs> well... The 
fish is a fish. But a dogfish and a waiting isn't really what I was after. See there, look. Double shot of a dogfish and a waiting. Now, although this is only a small waiting, this is only maybe a pound, you do get nice ones around here, up to being like three, four pounds. That's all the rig was, it's just a sliding lead and a two down and I just put fresh mackerel on. I'm hoping for haddocks drifting along a bit of like clean to clean to pebbly ground or fresh mackerel or squid. I'm hoping to pick up a haddock or two. If you notice there that I, I let the line down under control. If I let it down too quick, what could happen is the rig can come up and just wrap around the, the main line. So by letting it down under control, it, it, it helps stop that. It doesn't always work, but it does help. Another greedy waiting. Not a bad size though, is it? Not what I'm after. It's a really nice haddock. Now that is what we came for. What an absolute beauty. Look at the size of that haddock. Now look, it was a two down rig. And all I'd done is I'd just baited it with some fresh mackerel. I'll get this guy on up and then we'll have a look at him. You can usually tell when it's haddock because they, uh, they do give a good scrap. That's all, that's all it was there, look. Just a 2-0 cox and roll specimen extra with a fresh mackerel. Now all I've done is I've got, got a little area of reef here. It's like um, pebbly broken ground. A little bit of rock, a little bit of sand, a little bit of pebbles. And I'm just drifting through it nice and slow. I'm doing a 0.8 knots and like I say all I did was I've just got a sliding ledger and then I've got probably four to five feet total trace length and all I've done was I just made a dropper loop on it with a 2 row and I think this is a 4 row. Perfect.
dead simple and uh, all you do is I just sat it out in sat it out in the back of the boat just in a rod rest just so it was just trundling on the bottom and you just wait for the bite well, it doesn't get any better than that does it what an absolute stunner you see they've got a much a much different face and mouth than a cod or a pollock like a little tiny feeding mouth like that but aye, these are crackers aren't they see if we can't get one or two more unfortunately you will get a bycatcher waiting it's inevitable they are aggressive feeders and they will get on the baits very quickly. Yeah, I'll show you this one. Same rig again, look. Just a sliding lead. About four foot of trace with a two down. And this is all I've done, look, is I've just put just a little strip of mackerel on the hook. And this one's managed to pick up a little baby haddock. Needs a couple of pounds, but like I said before, when you're lowering these rigs down, you need to lower it down where? under control not very slowly just under control because otherwise the lead sinks really quickly and the rig wraps around the main line when it gets to the bottom it's just gonna get ball of tangles so it's no good it's not fishing now um, you can probably see we have got an awful lot of ground swell which is a lot of sea moving around that's not ideal for fishing like this because you want your baits to be in constant contact with the bottom so all I do is when I drop them down to the bottom like that and it's reached there, I leave quite a lot of slack so that the boat can drift off. So instead of it being quite close to the boat, oh, well that was almost instantaneous. Now you get a good fight from Haddock, they do, they do pretty much scrap all the way up to the surface. I'm not quite sure what this is because it isn't fighting very hard. Chances are it was on the bait that quick, it was probably just a waiting. Yeah, like I say, it was a waiting. And this, even though I dropped it down under control, it's still tangled up. That's what I'm talking about. You need to, you need to lay it down really slowly so that it's, uh, it doesn't tangle up like that. You can have a fantastic rig and fantastic bait and be in the right place, but if your rig's tied in a ball of knots by the time it reaches the bottom, it's not going to catch anything. You can see I'm getting good bites on both rods here. I have got a good fish on this one that I'm playing. And I'm getting a good bite on that one as well. It's another really nice header. That's a cracking fish. It's a cracking addict, don't you think? When I can get hold of him. Look at that. 
beautiful fish. Let's see if we can't deal with this one now. I think I've missed my chance with this one, but. Oh no, there's something there. Double shot of white. One's a whiting. One's a pouting. You know, getting amongst the species today. They are cracking fish, aren't they? There's another, there's another nice little one. This one, this one took pretty much bang on the drop. Now they, uh, I've shown you they've got, got different mouths to, to cod. They've only got like a little tiny feeding mouth. So you can imagine when you look at them, you can just imagine them like mouthing about on the bottom. See what I mean? Just a little mouth on the bottom. So they just feed around on the bottom like that. Whereas a cod's just got like a good bucket mouth. A cod will take a big bait. All I've been doing with these baits is like strip baits. Like that. Just get a strip and just hook it a couple of times through the end. So it's just like a long stringy bait. Thinking about the shape of their mouths, they're not going to fit a massive one in, they're not going to fit like a like a whole whole cuttlefish or anything like that in their mouth, like a, like a, a cod would. I haven't even had a chance to get that second rod back down yet. Now you will pick up other fish fishing like this. You will pick up, you will pick up your whiting and your gurnards and your pouting. When the tide drops off, and if you're fishing in like a sandy area, you'll also catch octopus fishing in this method. Now, just like a, a strip bait like that. All I do is I just hook it a couple of times through the end. Like that. Now there is a fish on that rod now, but it's not a haddock. So I'll get this other rod down and then I'll deal with that. If it had been a nice haddock, I would have, I would have reeled that in straight away. But a whiting, I'm not, I'm not too worried about. Whiting will sit there on the hook for ages, won't do now. Also, there's a chance of if you leave a fish there, it might get eaten by a bigger one. Well, it was actually, it was a little haddock. Thought it was a whiting, but it wasn't. It was actually another little haddock. Now that the fish have come on the feed, it is pretty much non-stop. I haven't even got really chance to to fish two rods properly. I might just have to go down to fishing one rod. It's not a bad situation to be in. Yeah, you cheeky whiting.
I've drifted about half a mile. I think what I'll do is I'll head back up to that same bit of ground and I'll come down again. I've got what feels like another good haddock. And if you can see the other rod's probably got one on as well. They're cracking fish, aren't they? What a great stamp of them today. We might have lost this one. Oh no. Although it feels like a waiting. Not fighting like a haddock. I mean, you might have seen with the rod on the other, with the other fish, it was constantly digging. Fights all the way, whereas a whiting, uh, it'll it'll fight every now and again whenever it wants to. This doesn't seem to have any scrap in it at all. Little waiting, like I said. It's definitely a little productive bit of a drift that I've just gone back up to that same spot, like I'd said, straight away. The nice had a coffee. Now we, uh, we've got three really nice haddocks now, and uh, I don't really want any more, so I'll do. Um, I'll put this down, I'll unlock that, I'll put my last baits out and then we'll call it a day. Of um, three lovely addicts is more than, more than enough for anybody. I've got, um, I really like haddock and um, we've got a friend of the family who absolutely loves it as well so I think I might drop a couple off at his house when we go home. Oh, actually this is just a big whiting. But it is a good one. I've got some wicked teeth on them waiting. There we go. I'm just uh, I'm just gonna call that an end. Carried on that last drift for about another quarter of a mile. Drift's dropping right off now, we're only drifting at like 0.6 knots and all I keep picking up is just stacks of these waiting. They're not bad fish but not what we're after. We've uh, had some cracking fish today. First fish that's uh, that nice pollock, that really was a bonus fish that, it was just a, a new piece of wreck that I wanted to have a look at. When I come past it, I thought, oh, that looks fishy. So I stuck a live bait down on my live bait rig and had a nice pollock. And then uh, come and found a little bit of ground, just just a little bit of mixed ground. Drifting along with uh, two down rigs with fresh mackerel that I feathered up on the way out. I do like fishing for haddocks. They are, they are a lovely fish and they fight all the way to the surface. Get a good one like some of them. I mean, we've had, we've ended up with, uh, with four nice haddocks. Uh, we must have had five or six little tiny ones, maybe two, three pound. 
Yeah, best one in there, I think, I can't remember which one it is, but we've got. But a stunning fish, aren't they? I think it's this one. Just over five pound. Can't shake off at like that, can you? It's fantastic fish. Um, ah, we had a nice pollock, plenty of, plenty of little stuff as well. Tons and tons of waiting. But that's just part of the fishing. Um, little dogfish. I all caught on just a very simple two down rig. There is um, absolutely nothing complicated about that. All it is is just a sliding lead like that to a trace. Trace about four or five feet long. And all I've done is just tried to tie the blood loop in it and add a dropper and that's a 2 o cox and roll specimen and I think that's a 4 o cox and roll specimen great hooks aren't they ah, and a bait all I used um, just in like long strips you can use squid as well squid's really good but um, I had fresh mackerel so I used fresh mackerel I hope there's been some um, some good tips and some good ideas in here for you. I hope you've enjoyed watching, I've enjoyed myself. And um, take it easy.